Good afternoon, everybody. For anybody who doesn't know, this is Ed Carter. And welcome to the Trader Vision 2020 July 18th User Workshop, our weekly Wednesday workshop. I see Nebraska's in the house, and we I talked to Cleveland earlier, so it's good to hear. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to try to keep it very short today, and it's going to be very interactive. So, you know, let's see what uh, what we've got on store here. Uh, I want to do a few trade updates. Uh, it's been a brutal week, as uh, the last couple of weeks have been pretty rough. A lot of not a a lot of non entries, uh, and that's good. Hey, Don. Uh, I wanted to show you a few new charting features that you might like. Uh, and then we'll answer questions and do some trade setups. So with that said, let's, uh, let's see if we can't flip over and do some charts. Let's try that. And let's pull up Trader Vision. So if those of you who've been watching the uh, blog account, uh, that's the trades I'm trying to update here. So the first one is Tandem. Uh, let's go here. Rough day in Tandem. Pulled back to our, our trend, and that trend line <coughs> may not be drawn too well. But we got in about 2480 down here, and our stop has now been moved up. I moved that yesterday uh, on this doji type day. I'm not liking the fact that we formed sort of a evening star here. Um, and I'm not liking the fact that even if I drew it incorrectly, we're challenging that, that trend line. Even if I drew that sucker incorrectly, and it should be down here. We're challenging it. So that's something we have to keep an eye on. But again, we've managed our stop. So I think we've got like 15 cents worth of risk there. That's not too bad. We're still positive on the trade. But I just wish we were in a better position. Uh, NIHD was one we got stopped out of today. Where is that at? That was a trade from, I don't know, sometime last week or whatever. But it just hasn't been going, just been grinding sideways. And then today we got stopped out. Uh, I think it was about 2 o'clock. Uh, NIHD. No, it was about 10 o'clock this morning. No? Never mind. It was 2.20. I'll get myself together here. So, rough trade. We ended up losing about 4% on it. Uh, because we never had a chance to really move our, our stop up here and it didn't get going. Uh, it may be just going back here to that long-term trend channel. It broke uh, the short-term trend and it's heading back to the long-term trend here perhaps. Uh, boot. So today's trade or the trade idea was boot and we uh, didn't enter at the open uh, but we did get in uh, this afternoon on that, and uh, we got our price. This is one of the reasons that Trader Vision is useful to you. If you watch the video from this morning, you can see that the trade plan only worked if we were able to um, accept that this pink line here Uh, this pink line was going to act as potential support for our stop, and we could move our stop up just below it. That's the only thing that made this thing work. Then we got a gap up, which we couldn't chase because, again, in order to get that two to one on our uh, our first first exit, we had to wait for it to come back down, and it by a few cents went below our entry, and then came back up, and that's where we bought. And again, that was about. Eh, almost three o'clock 
something like that. So we uh, we're into that, and so far we're positive on the trade. Not by a lot, but we're positive. Uh, looking for that first target, and uh, in fact, we need to exceed our first target in order to make our goal in this trade. We've got to be up in this, uh, right up above that first first target there, about 25.50 to make our goals. So that's the open uh, positions and the one closed position. We've had a couple others. Uh, that did not uh, did not trigger Kroger is not worth well it uh, doesn't really help to look at that because the chart tells the tale um, Kroger just fell off and still hasn't come back from our entry uh, plan uh, and Manitowoc Again, uh, it gapped up and then fell back down through. I don't catch falling knives and I don't chase gaps. And uh, I'm glad that I didn't because we've, you know, next day we fell off the cliff and we're trying to climb back in, but it's still a long way off. Nothing there. What was the other one? Oh, yeah, Fresh Pet. Again, uh, I'm glad that I used my conservative uh, show me the breakout entry here at all time highs and it just hasn't done so um, hasn't fallen off a cliff but it just hasn't got going going over here to play with trend I think <laughs> you guys are talking highways over there okay so I think I think that's it so let's uh, let's go on and do a little bit of uh, demo of our charting. For those of you uh, who were not here last week, we have done some updates to our charting uh, that makes it a lot cleaner. I like it a lot, um, and we're going the right direction. We're not there yet, but uh, as you can see, the background uh, is. Uh, is changeable so right click chart properties you can change the background uh, you can change the color of the grids as you can see I've got a uh, sort of a gray color now uh, you can also play with the opacity so uh, say I want to make it a mu much lighter gray um, I don't know if you can still see it there but they're there it's just very light and again chart properties I can put it back Uh, I can change the color of the up and down candles. I can change the color of the wicks and borders. Um, uh, so all of that, all of that is uh, interchangeable to whatever you want. And we've got built in. Let's just say that I, uh, whoops, let's go to here. If I change to a black background, uh, it will change the candle colors and the legend colors automatically, so that it's more visible. And again, you can do that any way you want. And uh, of course, scrolling, you can scroll to as many or as few candles as you like. Uh, that's something that's different between us and, say, TC2000. Uh, if a ticker has 10,000 days, such as an IBM, uh, you can scroll and and see all 10,000 candles if that's what you want. You can see the count up here. Um, we also have now made some of the indicators persistent. So Bollinger Bands, uh, moving averages, exponential moving averages, those are all persistent. So if I save them, uh, they will be, you know, close the application open, they'll be back in the same position. So your chart layout including the colors and those uh, those indicators will continue to be visible uh, we are right now and probably by tomorrow we'll have RSI MACD and possibly ATR in that same category and then everything up here above this 
line will be persistent for an individual candle. So your lines that you've drawn, your text, your bands, your circles and rectangles and so forth, Fibonacci will fall into that same persistent with a single chart category. It's not there yet. So that's about it. You'll notice that the date, I can't really point to it, but the date down here is yellow and the current price of the crosshair is, is yellow as well. That makes it a little bit easier to see. And up here, our green, green dotted line is the uh, current price. So that's about all I wanted to show you on uh, this. If you come tomorrow night, here's a teaser. If you come tomorrow night, we will be able to give you uh, the first scan, uh, the results of the first scan uh, from Trader Vision. My developer is working on that, and we've got it running on the server side. I don't have the interface, you know, so there's not a charting widget, but I'll be able to give you the results of that first scan. Uh, the nice thing is our scan runs against a bigger universe, so. Uh, TC2000 US stocks universe is like 4,400 or 4,300 stocks. Ours runs against um, 8,265, includes all stocks and all ETFs. Uh, and of course, that's with no liquidity filter. So I'm excited about that, and we'll be able to, to show you that tomorrow and uh, give you some results you can walk away with tomorrow night. So, uh, with that said, that covers about what I wanted to cover before doing some trade plans. So let me ask if anybody has any questions that they would like to answer, that have answered. Hmm, okay, nothing. Well, that's good as well. We can possibly get out earlier so let's uh, if you think of something just bring it up uh, in the meantime let's look at some tickers and plan some trades possibly here uh, let me run this see if there's anything that trips my trigger a nice J hook forming in ZFGN but that's a biotech I don't really want to chase that a lot of biotechs ALCS is both a J hook well at the moment it's a, a pullback opportunity but it's working on a J hook type having now broken back into an RBB um, you can see I had a, a trade plan set up on that that I was thinking about. And uh, if the market was a little bit more cooperative, I don't like the way it's been acting, but if it was a little more cooperative, I would have a, a trade plan on that. We're looking here at about 7, 7 a quarter percent up here to that first target. OII is another one of those oils that uh, is worth keeping an eye on there. Uh, probably looking for a breakout on this trade. Let's uh, look at a weekly here. Yeah. So, probably someplace up in here. And someplace up in here. And maybe on up in there as well. So if I was trading OII, I would be looking for a breakout where we had proven support here. So close above and retest and then bounce. It's going to be a tight one, only 5% to that first target. Uh, the only way I could get past that is if I could talk myself into an entry beforehand and there might be enough there 
that if we entered above that Yeah, I could probably talk myself into that. So let's plan out an OII here. Well, maybe not. Uh, looks like we should have earnings here in the next week. And I'd hate to start a new position with a week till earnings. So, so much for that idea. KKR is one that I've been watching. Kind of a, if yesterday's candle was black, it would be a bullish engulfing today. Not really a belt hold, but a nice strong candle after the gap down. Uh, you can see I would be looking for a breakout that proved it held close above back here and test above. Let's go and see what its KKR plan looks like. Yeah, we'd have only a couple weeks here. We'd have just over two, two and a half weeks uh, for this position to work before earnings. I don't know that we'll get two, two targets, but let's plan it out anyway. Let's say that this entry was, what, uh, 2765-ish. And the stop was down here at 2685-ish. Uh, With that first target up here about... Twenty nine eighty, and if we got ridiculously lucky up here around thirty one fifteen, tells us in this account. Uh, I think this is a hundred twenty five thousand. Maybe it's hundred thousand dollar account. It says we can do one hundred and fifty six shares. Let's just see what one hundred and fifty does. It's only 3% of the account, so we're okay there. Uh, and if we sold half of it at that first target, it tells us we're risking about 3% to the stop. So it's a very tight stop uh, for a chance to make basically just under 8% at that first target. So we would get 269 to 1. If we had to sell the entire position, we wouldn't quite make our trade goal. Uh, we would make 3 and a quarter essentially at this first target and I suspect that's as far as we'll get in just two plus weeks uh, but nonetheless if we were to uh, try to reach our trade goal we would have to get to 29.98 so just about right here so just above that first trade goal and if we uh, made both targets it would be a little 10% trade 423 well exceeding our 350 goal Okay, so much for that. Do any of you have any tickers you'd like me to look at? Be happy to plan out a trade for you if you've got one. Pretty quiet group here today. FRGI Fiesta Restaurant Group is another one that I've been looking at. I'll do this one while you guys type. Oh, okay, DSW. Okay, well, let me do this one first. FRGI. Uh, we have a little bit more time, like let's call it three weeks. And uh, let's just do one target on this, I think. Well, I guess we can plan two. I don't know if we'd get that second one, but it's possible. So with an entry here about uh, 30 and a quarter, a 30-30 let's call it, 
and a stop down here around 29.30. And this, where's the V stop at now? 29.06 is what the V stop says. So this would be V stop right in here. So we're just a hair above that, and that makes sense on a breakout with a higher price here. So I'm happy with that. Let's call it uh, 29.30. So risking a buck for a chance to make 33.10 at the first target, or 38.25 if we were to get to that second. 125 shares it says. Let's see what that does to the account. It's about 3% and that's doable. Let's sell uh, 70 at the first target. We pick up 9%, make just about 200 bucks. If we had to sell the entire position, we could actually make our goal, pick up the 350 at that first target. So that would work. And uh, if we were able to ride that second portion up higher, even if we didn't get to that second target, we do even better. Uh, if by some happy miracle we get that second target in the three weeks that we have before earnings, we'd be looking at a nice little payday of 633.25 for $125 worth of risk. So FRGI is one I think you should have on your list and keep an eye on for a close above and a retest of that that level. So let's look at DSW for Andy. Same sort of pattern. We've got a J hook uh, working here. Let's go to a weekly chart, see if we can't draw some lines. Pretty obvious that we've got a loved one here off of those highs, those lows, those lows. So that one's pretty obvious. Got another level up here someplace. Let's call it that. Off of these lows and these highs and those lows and highs in there and a couple touches in here. So that's a pretty good line. Let's see if we can't find one down here below price. What does this look like? That's pretty close off of these lows, this high, lows in there, some touches in here. Kind of touches the last few couple weeks, I guess. And let's go back to a daily. You can see where that line's at. The V stop would be 2683, so just above where that black line is drawn. So let's say that we planned a similar type of trade at this point. Certainly not going to buy in front of that for whatever that is, a quarter percent or something. So looking for a breakout and a retest. And there. Looking for a stop to be down. Eh, that's probably not going to work. Probably since V stops above, we'll go above. At that first target, it's going to be no way we get two to one. So we have to be very comfortable we can get that second target. On a less than a 23.6 pullback, certainly would make the 38.2 extension as our first target. That's logical. Um, this one's a little bit more of a stretch, but that is what the weekly shows. So let's go with what it shows. And DSW. Looks like we've got till the end of August uh, for earnings. We've got a nice bullish setup here. Uh, the only thing going against us is we don't have a candle signal yet. Um, and we have not um, turned the trend back positive in the very short term. So let's plan it out with one entry and two exits. So let's call it a, a twenty-three 
2795. Entry. We might even go a touch lower than that, but let's just do it with this. And a stop down here about 2690. With that first target up here about 2965. And that second target up here about 32.40, let's call it. 119 shares, it says. Let's just see what 110 shares does for us. Okay, let's knock it up to 125 shares. Closer to 3%, 131.25 in risk. If we sold 70 shares at that first target, again, we're not getting anywhere near that 2 to 1 that we were looking for. So that tells us we either need to realistically move our stop higher or lower entry price, and I don't see either of those making sense. So for me, DSW is probably not one that I can, can look at unless I truly believe that this first target that we drew, again, drawing it off the weekly, that this first target is not really going to be potential strong resistance. And I think it could be, so I would pass. But if you truly believe that you can get through that without much trouble, then you might be able to make that work with the other 55 shares getting you yeah, just under 3 to 1, 2.77 to 1, and just making our $350 goal on this trade. So your goals may be different. Your account size is probably different, and that's what it would look like. Of course, if you're trading options, I don't know that DSW has enough volume to, uh, to generate the options position, but uh, if it did, that would be a completely different ball of wax because you would have the leverage working for you. Hi, Robin. Uh, let's see what RMR. Never heard of that. Is that? Oh, it's a real estate. Okay, it's not a REIT, but it's real estate. So, again, the first thing I need to do is draw up some lines. Looks like we're at all time highs here. That looks like a fair representation. If we break this level, we'll be up into the all-time highs. This is almost certainly, at this price, well, you might be able to do it. You're not going to have the options. Um, so you'd have to do it as a stock, and that's going to make it tough to plan. Uh, but if you had a large enough account to justify 80 plus dollar stocks I would probably be looking at an entry here on a proven breakout so close above retest to prove that's now support and then move up probably gonna have you stop down in here what's this say 80 29 is the current So V-Stop says we can be right in this area. That's a trick if you want to draw lines with more precision. Drop down to an intraday chart. Sometimes, if TC2000 cooperates. 
that will help you. So let's go back to a daily. So there would be our entry and our stop. This would be our entry. We don't have a really good way to set a target. I guess we're going to have to use some sort of fib drawing here. That's too short term. I guess I will use this. And our first target is probably going to be on a 23.6 pullback. It's going to be here at the 38.2. You can already see that we're only going to get about one to one to that first target. If we're risking 4%, 4.5% to make 6.5%, that's going to be tough, but we can look at it. Uh, again, we have about three weeks. We've got some things working for us. We would have to plan on two targets to have any chance of making it here. But let's say uh, 83, whatever that is. It's called 84 bucks. As an entry, with what did I say, uh, 80, 20, 9, let's call it. 8035 because we will have moved up since then and then that first target is here about uh, 89 and a quarter with a second target here about yeah, 9330 so if we did all those things it says we can only do 34 shares in a hundred thousand dollar account um, 30 shares only gets us to 2%, but we've got pretty good. Uh, so we can go to 50 shares, which will get us up over 3%, but now we've got $182 of risk with that stop. And even if we sold only 20 of them at that first target it's only six percent so we're only getting a little less than one and a half to one so for me this is probably a hard pass but I've got no candle signal I've the only pattern I've got is we're breaking into new highs and if we had proven this as support that would make it uh, feasible I don't think there's gonna be options on a name like this and so it's going to have to be a stock trade, and I don't think it works as a stock trade. You would have to, you would have to assume you're going to make this second target up here at 91 bucks in order to reach that goal. If you have a much lower goal, maybe it's a different situation. But with this account, with the parameters and the goals that I planned for this, which was planned with you guys in mind, I think you guys supplied the information. It just it doesn't make sense for me. And you want to look at Cato as well. That was an ugly candle. I don't know if that had any news or not, but it's been trying to climb back ever since. That's a good thing. I see a potential resistance level here just above. And going out to a weekly, yeah, you can see where that breakout level is going to be resistance. You can see how I drew this line off of these lows. Should I move it up, you know, up off of these highs or down off of these lows? That's a judgment call. I chose down here because of these highs here. Uh, but 
I think there's potential resistance here. A whole bunch of it here recently. Remember, these are all weekly candles. And some in the past where it held support there. So someplace in that area, there's going to be some resistance. And for my for my money, that's going to make it too tight. You know, even if we entered right now at this price and ignore that first resistance level, we've got 7.5% to that first target. Where is our, our stop going to be? With the recent volatility, it's clear down here. About there. And it's saying basically in order to stay within reasonable volatility risk of being stopped out, we got to give it eight and a quarter percent. And I said we've got seven and a half percent or less to the second target, let alone the first. Yeah, so if we can get through that first resistance to that second resistance, it's still only seven and a half percent. So Rob and I you know, I apologize. It just won't plan out. I could run the plan for you, but the numbers just won't work. And I don't see how we could mess around with that to make it work. Anybody else have any tickers they want to look at? Looks like we're going to get out of here on time. Maybe I can, uh, can take a look at one of, uh, one of them off of my list. Big is one I've been looking at. I actually have been following it for some time now. It's just getting ready. There's a resistance level. We've got to take out and prove a support, but then you got a nice RBB here uh, with the next target up here. So let's look at Big. I think I planned it here recently. Not in this account. So Big Lots is going to report, uh, we've got till like the 1st of September, so that's plenty of time. And if we had an entry here of about 43.35, and a stop down here around 42.15, with a first target up here about 46.85 and I just throw them up I don't fine tune at this point 50.15 I try to give you know 5 cents or something like that to the line above it says we can do 104 shares let's look at 100 3.5% Selling half of them at the first target, we get almost three to one. Uh, and if we sold everything at that first target, we would, in fact, make our goal on the trade. Uh, if we were to hold on and get up closer to the 200 for that second target, big would be a much nicer trade, uh, giving us four, almost 4.3 to one. $515 overall potential gain there. So big is one you should have on your list and uh, look for it to break out and prove this uh, 4315 area as support. Okay. One last chance to ask questions. And while you're thinking, I'll remind you that tomorrow night we do have the monthly Trade Division workshop. Um, right here and I will uh, I will be doing some chart features um, possibly some other features and then also also uh, perhaps handing out the, the results of that first scan Okay, so with that said, um, I thank you all for your afternoon, 
We'll get out of here a little bit early. I will post this to the website later tonight and forget, don't forget the blog uh, every day as well as the YouTube channel. And uh, this is the blog. That's the blog address where I do a markup, trade plan, and a video of me planning it each day. So we'll see you there, and we'll call it a day here. Thanks a lot, guys.